Today, we continue to learn the ins and outs of recruiting. Now, last week, Drew Cameron began the conversation around recruiting for results. This week, he's going to finish that up, so if you haven't seen last week's show, please go back and watch it. It'll all make more sense. Take it away, Drew. So action item number three, as I said a little while ago, stop looking for the unicorns. That's just insanity. They're, they don't exist. Widen your lens beyond the industry. The industry does not employ uh, you know, this, this, these uh, uh, intersections of people. Hispanics, 13% uh, of the population. African-Americans, 12%. Asians, women. Okay, why don't you think about changing geography? Why are you recruiting only in your network, in your area, in the, in the area in which you serve? You should basically be advertising in the trade publications and other, uh, other online uh, things that will basically go beyond your uh, area and then pay to you know, relocate people. My business partner, Russ Horrocks, who's you know, uh, part of the, the team here at EGIA, he, um, I hired him out of Salt Lake City for a client in Hartford, Connecticut, in 2006, we basically paid to fly him across the United States after we did a, a phone interview and a face-to-face -face, uh, Zoom, or um, not Zoom interview, a Skype interview with him. And then we paid to fly him across the United States to interview him face-to-face -face and take him out to lunch and have a more depth conversation with him. Uh, we were interviewing other people as well, but then we hired him and we paid to relocate him uh, as well as give him, give him a sign-in bonus. And he he came on to that company and uh, you know helped to uh, sustain and grow that company through some very tumultuous times, obviously in the economy, and, and then grew up beyond that and was worth every penny of that relocation expense. Okay, Think differently. If you get someone who can generate revenue and profits for you, they're worth their weight in gold. Okay, Now is not the time to skimp on resources as far as time and money. This is when you basically want to go all in. You're all going all in on technology for software for your businesses and your vehicles and tools and whatnot, and you don't go all in in the recruiting process. And then you wonder why you get the results that you get. You gotta change the way you think, right? That same level of thinking will get you the same level of results. So retiring military, now more than ever, this is a great market, right? I mean, they're being decommissioned and being pushed out of places that they've been for the last 20 years. That's fine. Let's bring them here. I'm gonna share with you a resource down in Texas that will basically work with you to get them uh, educated on the GI Bill, okay? Because you can get them, um, uh, get paid to train them and hire them, and they have to make a two-year commitment to you. So you should be meeting with your local Veterans Affairs Office and find, about the, find out about these people that have already come out of the military, but also those who will be coming out of the military and be that resource, be the squeaky wheel in that uh, local uh, Veteran Affairs Office's ears so that the, the talent comes to you uh, when they're ready. Schooled for troubled teens. Hey, some of these kids have had a rough life. Maybe they've lost some parents or they got in, they, they made a bad mistake. Well, the Long, who's part of our team, I hired him out of prison, right? Um, you know, and we, yes, we did a background check on him and we understood who he was. Okay, but I didn't hire the person who went into prison. I hired the person who came out of prison. There's some kids that are in troubled teen programs um, and, and, you know, the, some of these schools out there. Again, you should go in and speak to these schools and give these kids an opportunity. They just need someone who's going to take them under their wing. But everybody thinks they're bad people. They're bad kids. They're not bad people. Okay, they just had a bad. Uh, they're a product of their environment. People freed from pr prison, as I mentioned already, right? And make sure you check with your attorney and your insurance company just to be safe, right? But be selective when you're doing that process. High school guidance counselors. If you're not in high school guidance counselors' offices every year, having one or two meetings a year with these people and letting them know about the scholarships that you have available, that you'll pay to train these people, you'll give them a wage while you're training them, you'll give them their starter toolkit, then you're not focusing on the right things, okay? So partner with the technical program. Some of them have vocational uh, vote tech programs within the school. Provide the scholarships and those tools to start. And there's a lot of kids nowadays, they're not sure where they're going, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the economy is up and down, up, up, up and sideways. There's, there's all kinds of turmoil on college campuses. There's a lot of kids who are now thinking, hey, Maybe that linear path of going through traditional education isn't the way I should go. And some of them are taking a year off to find themselves or to travel a little bit, but some of them need to make money too while they're trying to figure out life. And maybe you could basically offer them a stopgap, a bridge, a bridge job, and then maybe they come back to you at some point. Ensure that the high school is fully aware of the EGIA scholarship program. Uh, you know, it, when you become part of EGIA, you're gonna learn about the foundation. 
We do a lot of uh, great fundraisers to raise money in order to basically give these scholarships and pull people into the, into the industry. And you can sponsor one and you could sponsor it to your local high schools and have your name attached to it and, um, and, and tap into the resources, uh, a breadth of resources for recruiting on the EGI Foundation website as well. Okay, you should be presenting a back to school night uh, for juniors and seniors. You want to get in uh, to go you know, back to school night also in front of the freshmen as well as the, the sophomores, but definitely for the juniors and seniors who are really thinking about what's next. We got to catch these kids when they're young. That's what the military does. That's how they basically make having the opportunity to die attractive. And yet we struggle to get people into this industry. I've never figured that one out. All right. So career night, uh, you know, you, I would pitch career night at the high school, which is a job fair, and you had kind of set it up to have a speed dating format, and you get other, you know, uh, employers in town to kind of come in and participate in this. But you get to sit down and have people kind of come through and and learn about the industry. It's not about your jobs; it should be about just, you, you know, being uh, generic and getting people to think about the trades generically speaking, because. You can then say, hey, and, and if you're going to do that, give us an opportunity. Give us a consideration and come by and have a conversation with us at, at our place of employment. But talk about people, about the opportunities in the trades, generally speaking. And then, like I said, you want to hire for attitude and, and teach the skills. We can teach the skills. So if I can get the right attitude, it's going to be, I don't know, it's like 35 pages of, of, of resources I'm going to share with you. But here, I'm going to share with you a few, few that you can go ahead and get your people educated. There's no right one here, no good one, no bad one here. They just are what they are. That Perfect Technician Academy, they will work with you to go ahead and put your people into a six-week program and get it funded by the GI Bill. If you reach out to them, you basically have to uh, go ahead and uh, pr provide the, the candidate that you're going to get by working with your local Veterans Affairs office or whomever, and then you uh, pay for them to get down to, uh, to Texas. You pay for their uh, – give them a wage, obviously, while they're going, getting schooled. You pay for their um, uh, expenses, hotel and food and whatnot. And in six weeks, they will return a fully qualified uh, technician to you. The Trade Academy is another one. Technician, uh, Technical Arts Center and Success uh, Track Network, as well as the Virtual Technician HVAC. And now you've got, obviously, the virtual reality game, if you will, or virtual reality tool uh, called Interplay, where they can learn in virtual reality, how to work on heat and air conditioning equipment. So action item number four, re-recruit your raving fans. This is your most overlooked recruiting strategy. Most contractors fail here. It's also why you have a, an exodus of your people every so often. You've got a hole in your bucket because you're not re-recruiting your people. When someone comes on board with you, you need to review them at least once a year, if not up to quarterly. And find out what's working, what's not working, what are we doing, what do we need to be doing, what do we need to start doing, stop doing, keep doing, what can we do better, how can we make the place of employment an even better place you know, for our coworkers, what else is it that we can do for our customers, what other impact can we do in the community, and re-recruit these people. When you came on board, why did you come on board originally? If you don't know that, you need to find that out, and then make sure, is that the reason that they're still here? What keeps you employed? What, why do you stay? You know, you never ask that question. I always ask customers the same question. You know, if I had a service agreement customer for 20 years, I said, you know, when you, if you can remember when you, you know, joined the John H. Cameron and Sons family, why did you join the John H. Cameron and Sons family? Maybe they remember, okay? And let me ask you, why do you keep coming back? We appreciate that you keep coming back, but why do you keep coming back? Some of you might be afraid to know, right? Okay, or you might stir a hornet's nest is what you're thinking. Ask the question. When you basically show people that you care why they're part of the family, they're going to go, go back into that database and they're going to remember the good feelings that they had and the good feelings that they still have about you. So realize that your coworkers can convince others. Like I said, are you a destination place of employment? Not just as a contractor, but is this a great place to work? Not surprisingly, if you read the trade publication uh, publications, one of the top 100 places to work every year, according to, I think it's um, either Inc. or Forbes magazine, um, is a contractor down in Texas called TDI, TD Industries. It's not one of the best contractors to work for. It's one of the top 100 places to work in the United States of all places to work in the United States. 
Do you not think that they're a destination place of employment? That means they have raving fans on their team who not only do the work, but help them get other people to join the team. Okay. Do you offer a unique coworker experience? Okay. You know, where coworkers are empowered to go above and beyond the work and make a difference in people's lives. Do you give thank you notes to your, to your, not only to your people, little thank you notes, handwritten thank you notes, as well as send them to spouses. I'm not saying send an email. You could send some emails, but how about a thank you note? Literally a thank you note that you, you literally take the time and you write out onto a card just to say, hey, thank you for sacri making the sacrifices that you and your family do to allow your husband or wife to put in the extended hours that they do. It's not only meaningful to us, but it's also meaningful to our coworkers as well as our customers and the community in which we serve. And we hope that he or she makes you proud because we are proud of them and proud to have them on our team. Do you not think that that would basically go a mile you know, when someone has to work uh, overtime or weekends or holidays? So just think about some of the, you know, the creative ideas that you can do that I've got listed up here on the screen. Uh, again, not all inclusive, just a few of the ideas, all right? Okay, do you have an environment that allows for work, family, harmony, and integration? If you think you're going to get a, pre a personal life and a professional life in balance, good luck, okay? Smoke something else because that ain't happening. Yeah. In reality, you need harmony and integration. Life and work need to work together, and it's different for everybody. And you need to realize that just because you have a position, you can't treat everybody who takes that position exactly the same, right? And so are you offering care services? Home care, like what, what if every employee didn't have to worry about cutting their grass or shoveling their snow, right? Or any other home services, like plumbing needs. Maybe some of your technicians can take care of it, but the people in the office can't. What if you made home easy for them? What if you made, had offered pet care and child care so they don't have to worry about that? Well, a lot of people that went home during the pandemic that didn't, didn't want to come back because they got used to being at home with their kids and their pets, and they found that their kids and pets did better with them. So, you know, could we offer something? Reimagine what we do. Fitness. Fitness, not the way that you think. Yes, health, fitness, for, certainly. Nutrition, spiritual, emotional, and financial. What if you brought in uh, people and tools and resources, okay, access to a gym for certainly, uh, certainly, but some speakers that could come in and help these people, you know, navigate their lives better. If I can be a better human, I can be a better coworker. We all think about the coworker. We don't think about the human. Okay, there are some struggling marriages and struggling families out there where even the relationship between the, you know, the, the, the parents and the kids are struggling, you know, or the kids struggling in school. What resources can we do? And, and, and can we customize this for our coworkers? So again, think differently. Pay yes more for top attitudes. The fact that we're not paying $50 an hour yet, okay, wage solo for a technician is insane. The customers should be paying for that. We, we allow every other job, every other business and home to function, okay, because of what it is that we do, yet we don't charge commensurately for that, right? Raise your prices, implement performance pay, so that when people do well, they get paid well. Pyramid scheme. If I basically uh, am the result, for, uh, result of hiring, you hiring multiple people to the team, if I'm responsible for referring multiple other technicians to the team, why don't I get a piece of their action? Okay, why can't I build my family tree and have an annuity within the company where I get a pyramid scheme pay for a small piece of that, maybe like a half a percent or one percent? There's a way for you to do this within your organization and pay an annuity. Get creative with your coworker benefits, financial retirement counseling, daycare, pet care facilities that we kind of talked about there. Okay, employees' homes as beta test facilities. If you're not working with your manufacturer to make sure that your employees have the products and services that you sell in their homes, then that's a mistake. Because how can I speak to something that I don't live with? You've got to find a way to get those things into to people's homes. I have clients where we basically get you know, the latest, greatest thermostats into people's homes, the latest, greatest ductless mini splits, inverter compressors, modulating furnaces, indoor air quality products and services. Okay, And like I said, you may have to call the herd and upgrade accordingly from time to time. Don't keep everybody on the team, okay? Probably the bottom 20% have to go. That's why there's a draft in the NFL and in every sport every year, right? Okay, new people come in, less performing uh, potential goes out. Customers are also connected. So not only are you re-recruiting 
the raving fans of your people, okay, within your people, but how about the people that we serve? I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted by the fact that contractors do not reach out to customers to let customers know of employment opportunities that we have within the organization. Interestingly enough, when I do that with my clients, we typically get a handful of customers that come through the recruiting process. I've hired a few customers over the years for clients. So customers can be ambassadors um, you know, to get you into their network okay? because they want you to do more than you do. I know many of you who do HVAC have been asked, you know, do you know anybody who does plumbing? Do you know anybody who does pool services? Do you know anybody who does drywalling? And what they're basically saying to you is, I wish you did it, but because you don't, I trust you enough to give me that referral. And until you get into that, I guess that's what I have to do. But they would like you to do more and expand more of your services, okay? With more people, you can do more things. So everybody also wants to be a hero, right? Because that, you know, when, when you're at a party and someone says like, geez, I, I'm, I'm looking for a good plumber. I just wish I could find a good plumber. You know, somebody wants to be that resource that steps up and says, I got a guy. I got a person, I got a company, right? So everybody likes to be that hero, that connected person who's kind of the mayor and is well networked there. That was my, my older brother. He, he had a resource for everything. He was the best salesperson that I knew because if you had an issue going on in your home and our company or the companies he later worked for after we sold our company um, didn't have that resource within his organization, he had a contact for you because he basically was gonna make sure that you are always staying in contact with him so that in case you ever had the need for the products and services that he had, he, again, he was your go-to resource, but he was your go-to resource for everything. So think about how can you be that hero to somebody, okay? Do customers know, know like I said a little bit earlier, what you value in, in coworkers? Not only your network, but do your customers know what you're looking for in the people? Odds are they know somebody, okay? And are any of your customers potential coworkers? So think about that. So action item number five, is your message getting through? Are you simply basically preaching static uh, and broadcasting static to the wrong audience, okay? So diminishing returns. Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs basically, uh, and he also had the show called Somebody's Gotta Do It. He says, we are lending money to kids. This is about talking about kids that are going to college. We're lending money to kids we don't have, to kids who can't pay it back, to educate them for jobs that no longer exist uh, and will pay less and disappear over time. In fact, 75% of what you learn in college is obsolete upon graduation. And if you ask the typical kid um, or person who's gone through college, what part of what they learned in college are they uh, applying to their job today? You'd be surprised that basically most of them say very little, if any. So we, we, again, sending, you know, you know, sending kids to college is not the answer. And like Mike Rose says, we have to make work cool again. The military does it, like I said, in their commercials. They make the technology and the, and the job and the things that you do on the job look really cool. Without ever telling you, you do have the potential to get deployed and die. And they get people you know, coming in there in droves because the work looks cool. Okay? You need to show the, uh, the technology and the tools in your uh, online marketing and your commercials you know, for, your, um, uh, for your jobs. Okay. Show people the example of the life that they can have by working for your company. You should basically not only show a day in the life of your employees out there in the workspace, but you know, have them being interviewed at their house, sitting by the pool, talking about the life that they have because of working for your company and working in the trades. And, and it's not always about what you have to say. It's what the people on your team have to say about the opportunity. And you can kind of see their, you know, the, uh, you know, the recruiting purpose uh, posters that Mike Rowe kind of uh, promoted there. Now, what are some of the positioning statements that you need to do? Again, like I say, are you broadcasting the right message? Or are you talking about get a job in HVAC? You know, we're growing. That's all about you. You need to talk about them first. You need to talk about the people, their lives, the, you know, the, the, the angst maybe that they're experiencing in some of the, you know, the jobs that they have or for some of the employers that they have. So lifelong careers without losing four, year, four years of your life and a ton of cash. Climb a mountain of opportunity without an avalanche of debt. We hire for attitude. We teach you, uh, you know, life and job skills and provide you the tools for success. Always in demand. That's actually the website for the foundation recruiting side, which is alwaysindemand.com. But an always in demand, safe, lucrative, and fulfilling career but without the burden of a college debt. There's people that won't, you know, dig out from college debt for 20 years. Okay. There's little to no debt when it goes, comes to trade school. 
right? Are you making a, a difference in the life? You make a difference in the lives of others. You can do well by doing good. Inquire if you are inspired. Today, more than ever, like I said, Gen Z and millennials, they want to be associated with companies who are making an impact in critical causes and charitable events and communities. So make sure that you're part of those things as well. Live the life that you've longed for. Have the career you're proud of. These are the types of messages that you know, the today's society wants to hear. Make an impact in your life, family, community, and the world. That's what people want. They want an impact. They want to know that they matter. The, you know, the work that we do matters and that I can make a difference. Aspire to greatness or assimilate for society's uh, model of success. Society's model of success, look how it is today. It's a hot mess. A lot of people are unemployed, sit on the sidelines, right? And lastly, action item number six. So I'm going to breeze through this because we're going to dive into this a lot more in depth. This is where you get to obviously pull it all together and kind of make, you know, make it come alive. But I'm going to basically speed through this uh, because in February when we get together, I hope you will join us. Uh, we're going to dive deeper into this. And I'm going to give you a lot more resources than I'm able to give you here today. But yes, the usual suspects for recruiting, yes, you can run ads in the newspaper classifieds. But why not run in the, in the part of the newspaper that people actually read, which is the, you know, the, the sports section and the general news section of the newspaper? And yes, I still think the newspaper is great, both in classifieds as well as in the, in the display section, as well as for marketing for your products and services. Why? Because the people who get the newspaper read the newspaper. Okay, and they might either be the person who's a candidate or know somebody who could be a candidate. Advertising the weekly and monthly trade publications. Website uh, have a website recruiting page with an online recruitment video. Yes, you should have a page on your website, no doubt. I'm sure many of you do. How about a dedicated recruiting micro site? Okay, separate from your website that drives people towards the trades. Right, billboard, building signage, disposable road signage, as I talked about a little bit earlier. Radio, Spotify, Hulu. Uh, those types of things. Netflix, wherever you can advertise in the what do we call OTT, over the stop, top streaming services, that's where you want to be. Okay, disrupt their lives. Okay, that's where you have to get into disrupting people's lives. Otherwise, they may not be looking where you're you're going. If I'm an, if I'm a technician, I probably don't need to go to the recruitment stuff to find my next job. I go knocking on a door. So how are you going to pry me away if you're looking for that unicorn? How are you going to pry me away from where I'm gainfully and happily employed? You've got to disrupt my life. Some of the other usual suspects, you're very familiar with these. So I'm not going to go ahead into those. These are some straight trade-specific sites that are available to you out there. Not the only ones. I'm going to give you a whole bunch more, but these are a few that are out there that are trade-specific. Some of the diamonds in the rough. Facebook. You should have ads on Facebook, okay? On your, your company page, yes, but you should have a dedicated career Facebook page separate from your company page. That, like I said, shows a day in the life of your employees, but shows the life that they can have by working in your company and in the trades. In addition to that, you can have banner ads that pop up. There, uh, when I was looking for an operations manager a few years ago, we worked with a company who ran banner ads. We couldn't find an operations manager anywhere. And we ran these banner ads that they were uniquely and strategically placed for very, very little money. We got eight of the most qualified candidates uh, because Facebook understands who's tied to the HVAC industry or to the trades for that matter, okay? LinkedIn is a good place to look for people. Instagram, Pinterest, government and state websites. There's just a few of those right there that you can look at. This one right here says workforce development and your state. So it's workforce development plus your state. Google that and you'll find some sites where you can uh, you know, get some information about uh, you know, driving uh, you know ads out there into the into the marketplace. EGI Foundation, like I said, you can promote the scholarship uh, or sponsor a scholarship if you like as well. Okay, and another level leverage not only your social media and digital footprints, but that of everybody on your team. You should post these personally, but so should the people on your team. You do know that your technicians know other people in other companies or affiliated with them, and so you've got to leverage the network of everybody that's on your team. Okay, military recruiters, as we kind of talked about a little bit earlier. And if you want to get a little bit more aggressive and you want to pay a headhunter to go after this, these are the types of organizations that can get you some results. You'll pay for it, uh, but they can get you some results. Again, they're not the only ones that are out there, but there are, are a few of them. Work and rework your networks, right? People that you know, okay, and, and the people that they know. Let people that you know that, you know, that you're looking for, for people. Always let them know. Remind them on a regular basis that you're always looking for people in every position within your organization. 
and that you'll pay to educate. Leverage your coworkers network. They're tied into people. Yes, a lot of you offer these bounties or bird dog bonuses. That's fine. What number are you offering? Because again, if I'm going to offer a signing bonus to somebody who's coming on board, uh, I'm going to also offer that same level of signing bonus or bird dog bonus bounty to my coworkers. It shouldn't just be that I get that because I joined the team. I should have an opportunity to get it by referring somebody to the team. And then, like I said, build my family tree and have that annuity you know, kind of come in. Tap your customers, as I said. Put it into your company newsletter, your e-newsletter. If you're not mailing a company newsletter, that is a big mistake. You should be mailing a company newsletter to your customers. Flush and reflush your pipeline on a regular basis. The people that you didn't hire eventually get skills. And great, engage in guerrilla warfare, and here are a couple ideas on that. The recruiting business cards. Again, I don't like to talk to people when they're on the job. I'm going to make sure I wait to talk to them at, 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 the, uh, at the right time. But I'm going to give them a business card or put it under their windshield wiper. I'm going to, if you're going to send your people to a home show, I'm going to poach them. All right? And have multiple modalities. Advertise the train pay, uh, paid training. Recruit mark, car mechanics and computer, uh, computer technicians and whatnot. Maybe start your own computer uh, recruiting um, department within your organization or partner with a third party. Cross-training between uh, plumbing and HVAC and electrical so that you can uh, uh, maneuver people throughout the, uh, throughout the year as the workload shifts and reconceptualize the workload and deploy the talent. We'll talk more about that in February when we get together. And get creative. Align yourself with trade schools and vocational schools. Align, you know, go after the school interns and, and have them as part of your team and pay to train them and then give them, offer them an opportunity when they get out of school. Give them a, a, an opportunity to ride before they decide. Let, have them spend a day in a life with your comfort advisor, day in life with a technician, day in a life with an installer. I'll pay you for your day and I'll buy you lunch. Get creative with what you're doing. Invite women to join the trades and offer suitable work as well. Leverage all of your resources out there when it comes to training. Use your manufacturers, your, your distributors, and partner with other contractors in your area to get people into the trades, okay? The best executor will win the talent uh, acquisitions uh, process. But you're all thinking you know, of your competitors as competitors. No, we're all in this together. Outsource your internal functions as, and then subcontract only as a last resort. And then maybe think about buying those subcontractors and assimilating them into your team and giving them the training you know, the, uh, that you would offer to anybody else. Okay, so show up in an impactful way to the people in their lives. Have something unique and meaningful to say if you're going to recruit for riches. Disrupt the conversation that people are having and shatter expectations of the opportunities that are available in the trades, uh, as well as within the marketplace altogether. Show people the life they can live and the career that they can have, the significant work that they can do and the difference that they can make in people's lives. People not only that you serve, but the people that you make an impact within the community as well. Be the employer of choice, not the contractor of choice. In the, within the community and make it uh, be a contributor to the community that people clamor about and say, wow, look at what ABC Air is doing. I, you know, I wish other companies did that stuff, not other HVAC companies, okay? And lastly, like I said, the reason that you don't have the talent that you want is because you're not remarkable. Awesome content right there. As always, be sure to share this on Facebook. And if you're not a member, click the button below to get a 30-day free trial, giving you access to all of our amazing content. Well, that's our show for this week, folks. We'll see you soon. Until then, bye-bye for now.